Before we really get into the video, I just want to try to do a quick intro. Um, I was a nervous wreck whenever <laughs> all this was going down. Reason being, uh, my neighbor is my point of contact to get into this junkyard. And he gave me a price for what I could get um, this Mustang for. And I told him, yeah, that sounds very fair. I'll definitely buy it for that. I just want to make sure the engine spins. So right after we had that conversation, it was radio silence for about a week. And uh, provided my neighbor uh, is super busy. He's in the middle of moving, in the middle of changing jobs. So I was trying to like, I'll be respectful and I'll let him <laughs> be a busy man. Um, and then I drive by the junkyard and he's there. Um, and then he calls me on the phone and he says, hey man, that Mustang you're wanting to get, it's the red one, right? And I had no memory of a red fox body in that entire yard. And uh, uh, we went back and forth. I said, I think it's gray. And he's like, well, if it's the 83 GT, it's red. And uh, we hung up and I then was like, I don't like that. So I sent him a picture. It's like, this is a Mustang I want. And he's, he replied like, I don't remember that car. That one might've been crushed. So then I'm looking through my phone and right next to the, <laughs> my dog, right next to the, um, the Mustang I want, there's a red Ford Probe. So I was freaking out thinking that he had, one of the cars that I wanted was crushed and they ended up trying to save a Probe <laughs> for me to keep. Um, and that was the more emotional side of my brain. The logical side of my brain wasn't worried because you know, my neighbor makes a lot of, he's not a, he's a Chevy guy, but he makes a lot of Ford comments that I'm like, this guy knows cars. So, um, I was in a panic and we can start the video now. All right. It is still here and the best part, the engine spins over. So it's got a mark on it so they won't take it and everything. It was all going to be okay anyways, guys, because this is the one that Richard, my neighbor, had saved for me. They got an X on it, but this is another 5.0, and it's a, it's a manual. I don't know if it's a 5-speed or not. But this one's really sweet. Um, I just noticed the windshield, though, but I like this one, too. It's got some cool wheels on the back as well. I do like that one. All right, and there she is. Let's see if we can break the ignition lock. The ignition cylinder or whatever get this thing pulled out and get it home I'm still waiting on my buddy to show up to help me but I managed to get the lock cylinder out oh don't look too much uh, I hope I don't have to replace the steering column on this damn thing on this dang thing but it uh, it steers now so one thing down a couple more to go Up until now, I've only hosed the car off, and now I'm gonna start vacuuming out some of the living things that have been in here. The uh, one side looks good, the other side faced the sun, it faced the east, so it's pretty torched. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna call it a night. I had a lot of trouble getting the remains of the um, ignition switch out but i finally got it and uh, we'll see what tomorrow holds according to o'reilly's the lock cylinder will work out of an 86 tempo that's about 100 times easier with a key the ignition switch looks good but i don't i didn't bring a um, pair of pliers or anything to grab these so the search continues Okay, we're back at the house. Um, I went through a lot of cars and every <laughs> every dang ignition uh, switch had different screws. And I had only brought in Torx. This one has like a negative Torx, but I only brought in like safety Torx with me. So I finally found one that I could take off and it's in good condition. It's a later model Fox. Um, and I've already ops checked it, it works. I got windshield wipers, um, Hazards, actually I think the hazards work without it, but a uh, cool fun fact, the hatch popper works too, which is definitely a bonus. 
getting the intake prepped or trying to take the intake off. All but four screws came out, so <laughs> not too bad. We haven't broken any yet. Um, so what I've done is I've just tapped them with a hammer, left it, you know, tightening and loosening uh, the bolt. And now we're going to let it set in some free oil and we're going to take our time with this one. I don't want any broken uh, bolts off in the head. All right, guys, I don't know what they put in this stuff, but I am unbeloving it. Um, check this out. This one, this has not been a day yet, and now it's starting to break loose. I'm going to give it some time. I uh, still have this one and one other to take out, uh, but I'm taking my time. Free all. Thumbs up. We are on day two of bolt extraction. I just gave this thing a nice hit with a hammer and I saw smoke come up. And then I put the uh, breaker bar on it and turn it to the right and I felt a little click. So we are, we're on the home stretch now. All the intake bolts came out. Really happy about that. I'm afraid if I was in the JY, I would have broken one, but patience, a hammer, free all, and then tightening first and then loosening, I think was the key. Um, the distributor fought me a little bit. That thing was stuck in there pretty good. Got that out. And this car has sat without a carburetor for, I don't know how long. I don't know if it's been since 03 or what, what's the case, but the intake ports had a lot of uh, crud in them, like leaves and bugs and uh, spider webs. So what I did was I made use this little apparatus and I vacuumed out what I could. And then I loosened every intake rocker to close the valve and then I blew it out. Uh, I got most of the stuff out and now I uh, sprayed carb cleaner in each port. And once the carb, once it all evaporates, uh, we're gonna blow it out again. And uh, I guess in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I could be proactive and drain the oil, but I don't know. Or I could clean up uh, this mess here. Alrighty, it has taken me well over a week to get here, but <clears throat> you got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> But uh, we're ready to put the push rods back in, the rockers, torque them to whatever spec that may be, and then the intake. We've struck oil for the second time. That last one is slow to oil, but it does oil. So now it's time to clean up the, the head of the intake surfaces or words or hard and then I'll put the intake on. Intake is clean and ready for install. We're gonna ops check the old distributor, check this out. Look at that, isn't that nice? So we got spark and everything and we got the intake sealed and everything. So maybe the next uh, scene, this thing will be running. Or I'll have a really good excuse. All right, this is take two for safety. Oh, that thing is, oh, it's arcing on, <laughs> it's arcing on that line too. But yeah, so that's a way to, okay, I better quit while I'm ahead. It works. Man, I'm getting so psyched. It's looking like a motor again. Um, what are we at, where are we at? I tried to turn it over. And as you can see with all this mess, I was, I was having issues and I'm going here and there and the solenoid's not working or maybe it is and I have power going to the starter wire and, and this, that, and the third. And then I realized, I bet you that starter needs to get hit with a hammer. Um, and I went underneath there and there's no starter. So that kind of stalls the plan for now. Um, I might have a, a spare uh, somewhere around here. But that is tomorrow's problem, so I'm gonna call it a night. See you tomorrow. It's the next day. Spoiler alert, I did not sleep well at all. <laughs> I was so excited about this. Have a spare starter, and, uh -oh. okay, there we go. Had to rob a starter bolt off the white car to match it up. Look to the bin, got two matchers, close enough anyways. 
to slam this bad boy in. The starter's in, it turns the engine over. I love this belt setup, <laughs> but I'm afraid that this alternator is gonna work um, and then I won't be able to shut it off as quickly as I want. So we're gonna take the belt off, put the white car's carburetor on, and we'll see what happens. All right, carburetor's on, starter's on. We're gonna try to start this bad boy up. Is it gonna work? We'll see. Okay, boom, boom. No, it's not even connected. That shouldn't matter. My heart is thumping. Thumping and bumping. And all that other stuff. <laughs> that battery doesn't sound like it's doing enough. 11 volts. Bad go. All right, we'll be back. Battery still doesn't have enough voltage, but still gonna send it. All right. All right, let's see what we got here. She wants a little bit more fuel on that. Oh, boy, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Not enough cowbell, okay. All right, that do it. Test 55. Okay. Yep, that's fuel. All right, little baby. Drink up. All right. Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we of the battery. Okay. All right, baby doll, check it out. Right. Boom. Man, I'm so glad <laughs> this thing fired up. Uh, I don't think my neighbor, Richard, will ever see this video. But if you do, thank you so much for being the mediator and being so gracious with your time. Because uh, he had to drop what he was doing one of the days so we could actually go check it out. Uh, the day that uh, I showed you all the red Mustang, my neighbor was right behind me. Um, you know, so thank you for that. My buddy Scott, he had the really cool ramp truck. Thank you, Scott, if you ever see this. Um, and what's next? Change of fluids see if the transmission works, get a radiator for it. Um, I've already taken the carburetor off and put it back on the daily. I do have a spare carb. I need to dunk it in some kind of a Marvel mystery concoction. Uh, see if I can get that one to come back to life. Uh, but I think that's gonna do it. I'm just, uh, also, it took a little bit for me to post this because I, I thought it'd be a cool thing to get the car and then get it running in one video. Um, so I'm happy that happened. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.